what's up guys welcome back to my channel i'm so excited <laughs> it's so good to be back um after a short break short short break um yeah so i recently got a dm asking me how i travel so often because a lot of people really find it hard to do that especially in our economy i have found ways to travel for free <laughs> and also have quality travels on um, a low budget basically um so i'm going to be sharing five ways i'm able to travel south africa only um on a budget or earning minimum wage um how i travel for free would be a different video i think yeah if you guys want to know how you can travel for free please like this video or leave a comment down below so i know if i should do it or not so let me get to it <laughs> My name is Zizile Masamahle CBC, going as Masamahle underscore S on Instagram, YouTube, as well as Twitter. Um, so I will be sharing with you guys five ways you can travel South Africa on a budget or on a minimum wage salary, right? And before I even get to the five ways, you need to plan and you need to prepare. If you are not organized and you're not able to do things in advance, just exit the video because this is not going to work for you. I plan my trips as good as a year in advance. Um, so if you're not a person like this, this is not going to work for you. If you're not a person who likes to save, this video is not for you. Um, if you think there's some magic way... <laughs> where you just travel uh wake up tomorrow and decide to go somewhere no unfortunately i don't have advice for that but for people who genuinely want to start traveling um yeah i think these tips will be helpful i have been to four or five provinces including the one i live in i've traveled kzn Gauteng, been to northwest i've been to um eastern cape uh quite a few times i love eastern cape i've also been to the western cape only Cape Town though twice um but I'm not going to mention the travels where uh, I travel for free or with my family because obviously that does not count but the travels where I used my own money um not earning much to travel these tips are what I would do so first of all you need to pre-plan um at least a year in advance um, or have dates a few months as well depending on how much you earn so if you're a low income earner you need a longer time to prepare if you're a high income earner then obviously you can do it within two or three months um the first thing that i do i have set traveling dates like there are three dates or months in a year where i definitely travel like no questions asked they booked for the next few years of my life um yeah so my first tip would be to pick dates that are sentimental to you that will motivate you to follow through with your plans so the three dates that i travel a year are dates that are very special to me and they're never going to change they are set in stone so if you know that you like celebrating your birthday or your child's birthday or your partner's birthday or your anniversary whatever date that is set every single year this makes it easier for you to start planning consistently traveling because i know on the 10th of march every single year i will be doing something because that's my birthday because if you rely on dates like christmas or um easters or school holidays those dates change every single year so it's really hard for you to know when exactly you're going to be leaving also those are peak seasons meaning you're going to be paying much higher than the regular price um so if your birthday is midweek that's the best time to travel because that's when you really get good deals so yeah set dates to travel if you don't have a date it's going to be really hard because you're going to use the money and you're just going to be discouraged because it's like ah when am i going to go and when you first start planning plan with one person or yourself uh, because the moment it's a group of people then it becomes a mess because now you have to accommodate too many people so set dates that are special to you to celebrate with people that are special to you that's number one. Number two is you need to identify what kind of traveler, if that's a word, you are. You need to identify what kind of experiences you want. I want a bit of everything. Um, so I do have times where I want to go into nature. I do have times where I want to go to a city. I do have times where I want to go by the beach. So depending on how i'm feeling that time or where i haven't been in a while then that's what i've choose but some people just like one 
form of traveling because maybe if you, you live too close to the sea so sea travel is not that exciting for you and you always want to go to the bush so that makes it so much easier for you you need to know because these places cost different amounts if you're going to book a hotel with the sea view you're going to be paying a different amount to the same quality or the same star of a hotel that has a view of a bush equivalently if there are animals at that game reserve you're going to be paying a different price so identifying where you want to go also helps with planning your budget tip number three is to find good deals so i use um, daddy deals hyperly airbnb i remember airbnb used to have that referral code thing oh I use that thing to its maximum. I think I sent my quote to like five different people. And I saved, I think I would get 300 Rand off um, whenever someone actually books using my code. So if you're using an app or um, a platform that gives you referrals, use them, use them. And then Hyperly is an app or a, a website that has um, different deals for travels. It's usually midweek. So um, you would have to book leave for these days, weekends, the price usually goes up. So you can download Hyperly. I will link um, the different websites in the description box below. Um, and then obviously a lot of people know about daddy deals. You always be on the lookout for those kind of things. Um, and then you use them to plan in advance. So yeah, sign up to those websites. There, I'm sure there are others. If you guys know any other traveling websites that give good deals, please list them in the comments below. That helps a lot. Tip number four is saving. Okay, so Flight Center has a, it's a plan. It's a savings plan. It's a traveling savings plan where you and a group of people can put money into an account and then decide where you want to go or when you want to go. The amazing feature about this is that each person gets their own personal account. So if you are there with a group of people and one person is not depositing the set or set amount every month, their account is going to be empty because each of you guys deposit money into a separate account. Um, but it reflects as one. I don't know how to describe it, but it works that way. So if there's two of you, there's going to be two different account numbers. So each person deposits into their own account. So if you guys are a group of friends or family or you're a partner or you have a partner, um, you each can save money towards whatever trip you want to go to. So if you have identified that you want to go to, I don't know, Bumalanga um, for a trip on Flight Center that is 5,000 Rand, um, you know this the year before. So you open this account and then you guys start putting in a grand for five months or you put 500 rand for a year do you understand so it helps to do that as well but you can't do this if you don't know where you're going and when you're going and what you want to do so the first two steps or the first three steps rather are very important because it helps you with the saving part you don't want to save for indoor hires um, you need to know what you're saving towards when you're going to actually use that money and how. So yeah, um, um, I think Flight Center still does that. So you can Google or you can save on your own account. Um, I know Capitec allows you to open a uh, different accounts within your account. Standard Bank allows you to do that and you gain quite good interest. I'm enjoying my tax-free savings accounts from Standard Bank where I set a goal. So I'm going to say I want to save 10,000 Rand, I want to save 5,000 Rand. And then every month I know that I'm putting this money aside. Um, you can open an account for seven days notice, 30 day notice, um, so that you don't use the money if you know you struggle with discipline. Otherwise, you can just open a normal savings account and put the money there. But you need to know how much you're saving. Don't just put money there and say, oh, I'll decide when I get to a certain amount plan before you start saving yeah and last but not least you need to go where you're going you need to google where you're going you need to google the menu of the restaurants you need to google the weather that side you need to google how far it is from everything i will even go on the uber app and i will google from my hotel to the mall how much is that 
I will Google the menu of the restaurant. I am having meals. I will Google the hotel menu. If I'm having meals three times a day, how much is that going to cost me? I will then go on Instagram. I will search the hotel and I will look at the tags. I will look at the location. Is it what they're selling on the websites? What kind of pictures are people taking there? Um, so I know what to prepare. Um, I look at all the activities around. I'll always call the hotel. What can I do? What extras do you guys offer? Because if you don't do that, the disappointment that you're going to face is, especially if you're a person who works really hard for your money, and when you just receive something that you're not expecting it's really not a nice feeling because you don't actually have the privilege to just be like ah, i'm gonna leave go somewhere better uh or whatever so you're stuck there for that period that you have booked so always always make sure that you google everything and all the costs involved in taking the trip because also if you don't have the money to enjoy being there then it just defeats the purpose because there are some places where you find that the venue or the accommodation is reasonable but it's so far from everything which then just defeats the purpose of going there because if you booked somewhere closer to everything it actually would have worked out way better or some hotels or some airbnbs have different photos but when you get there it's not what you imagined so always set your expectations by doing our research and if you pre-booked earlier you still have a chance to get a refund or to book somewhere else so yeah that's it from my side sorry about the noise um if you guys found these tips helpful please give this video a thumbs up and leave any comments down below any tips you might have any questions you might have i look forward to hearing from you see you guys next week friday bye